Chapter one, lesson four, greatest common factor. Our learning objective is you will use prime factors and the distributive property to find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers. Okay, so remember, a number that is multiplied by another number to find a product is a factor. So factors of six are one, two, three, and six because one times six equals six, two times three equals six. Factors of nine would be one, three, and nine because one times nine is nine and three times three is nine. Every number has one as a factor. So one is always gonna be in front when we're factoring anything because one times that number will equal that number. So our essential question is how can you find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers? A common factor is a number that is a factor of two or more numbers. The numbers 16 and 20 have one, two, and four as common factors. Because we look here, one times 16 is 16, two times eight equals 16, and four times four equals 16. Down here at 20, we have one times 20 equals 20, two times 10 equals 20, and four times five equals 20. Then we go through and they have circled the numbers that are in common, they have all those. So the greatest common factor, or GCF, is the greatest factor that the two or more numbers have in common. So the greatest common factor of 16 and 20 is four because that is the greatest number that they listed. Um, sorry, that they listed in both rows. Okay, unlock the problem. Jim is cutting two strips of wood to make picture frames. The wood strips measured 12 inches and 18 inches. So one is 12 and one is 18. He wants to cut the strips into equal lengths that are as long as possible. Into what lengths should he cut the wood? So the one way we're gonna do this is to find the greatest common factor or GCF of 12 and 18. So I know that one times 12 equals 12. Two times six equals 12 and three times four equals 12. For 18, we have one times 18 equals 18. Two times nine equals 18. And three times six equals 18. Then I'm gonna go through and I'm going to circle anything that I have in common. So ones are common, twos are common, threes are common, four is not. Six I have in common, there's no nine, 12, or 18 in both. So now the greatest common factor, the greatest number that we have in common there is the six. That's one way. Let's use the list. Um, that's my favorite way but there are a couple other ways. So another way would be to use prime factorization. So write the prime factorization of each number is the first step. Now remember, this is, this, this is a different way of getting the same answer. So use whatever makes sense to you, okay? So we could use prime factorization to figure this out too. So write the prime factorization of each number. I'm gonna use the tree because that makes the most sense in my brain, but I have 12, which I can divide by two, and then I get six. If I divide the six out, I can divide it by two again and get three. So the prime factorization of 12 would be two times two times three. For 18, I can divide it by two again, and then get six, not six, nine. Divide that again by three and three. So I should get two times three times three. Place the prime factors of the numbers in the appropriate parts of the Venn diagram. So now I'm gonna put them over here where they belong. Well, in common they have, they both have threes and they both have twos. 
So I should have a 2 and a 3 in the middle. Then I also have an extra 2 here with the 12s, which we put here. And then I have an extra 3 over here. To find the greatest common factor, find the product of the common prime factors. So now I'm just going to take what's in this middle circle here and multiply them together. So 2 times 3 equals 6. So the greatest common factor is 6. So Jim should cut the wood into 6 inch lengths. Okay, again, use what makes sense to your brain. To me, this use a list makes the most sense. Prime factorization may make more sense to your brain than it does mine. That is fine. Okay, so now we're going to look at distributive property. Okay, distributive property up here, this very first box, says multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add-end by the number and then adding the products. That's a fancy way of saying that we can take this and turn it into this. So notice if I have a 5 times something plus 5 times something, I can pull that 5 times out in front and leave the something plus something in the middle. That's all that definition is saying. So looking here, it says you can use the distributive property to express the sum of two whole numbers as a product if the numbers have a common factor. Okay, so what we can do here is we can use greatest common factor and the distributive property to express 20 or 36 plus 27 as a product. So it says find the greatest common factor of 36 and 27. So if we have 1 and 36, 2, forgot to put my commas, we have 2 and... 18, 3, and 12, 4, and 9, 5 does not work, and then we have 6. Okay, for 27, we have 1, 27. 27 is odd, so we do not have a 2, but we have 3 and 9. 27 cannot be divided by 4 equally. 27 cannot be divided by 5 equally. And 27 cannot be divided by 6 equally. And, oh, I forgot to write my 7. And now we're up to 7. So that's all that I have for that factor. Now I need to go through and find the greatest common one. So let's see, I have ones in common, threes in common, no fours, no five, or no six. We have nines in common, not 12, not 18, 27, or 36. So my greatest common factor then is going to be nine. So now that I know that, I can look down here at the next step, and it says write each number as the product of the greatest common factor and another factor. So when I look back up here, I knew that to get to 9, or using my greatest common factor 9, I needed to times it by 3 to get to 27, and I needed to take 9 times 4 to get to 36. So now I've written this right here, this 36, as 9 times 4. They are the same thing. Okay? So 36 is the same thing as 9 times 4. Use the distributive property to write 36 plus 27 as a product. So now, since I have that 9 times and 9 times, I can pull that out in front. Since it's in both parentheses, I'm putting it in front now and just leaving the 4 plus, and the 3. So now I have 9 times 4 plus 3. 
which if I distribute that out, I would take 9 times 4 plus 9 times 3, which is 36 plus 27. When I go ahead and solve that, solve that, I get 63. Okay, so 9 times 4 plus 3 equals 9 times 7, which is 63. That's our check way up. So 26 plus, or 36 plus 27 equals 63. And if I check my answer down here, it's also going to get me 63. So 36 plus 27 equals 9 times 4 plus 3. The same thing. Okay, if you have any questions, please ask your teacher. And... Oh, one more reminder is our objective today was you will use prime factors and the distributive property to find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers.